I'm going to address disagreeable people in conversations in two ways. Things you can do before that conversation and things you can do right in the middle of that conversation. Do you remember the last time you wanted to yell, shut up? I do. I know. It's not an ego enhancing thing to admit. And it's true. Human beings are emotional. It's part of how we love so deeply. And it also means that things that we love deeply when they're threatened, we become protectors. It's okay. It's part of our DNA. Connection and belonging are essential for our very survival, let alone thrival. So if you have found yourself wanting to have a conversation about something that you very much disagree with, maybe even something in the heat of the moment, as opposed to something that you get to prepare for, let's talk about a few things that can help you with that. One that's really important is to realize, where are you in your body? I think these days, um, nine in 10 people that I'm working with as an executive coach are exhausted and they're feeling the emotional pressure of families being out of sorts, many dealing with losses, people being uncertain about the future and finding it difficult to get clarity in their minds. All of these things snowball into creating uh, poor sleep, usually pretty poor routines around physical well-being and not eating as regularly or as healthily as they could be. This is the time when we really need those good habits. And in fact, one of the most important things you can do is give yourself a bit of structure. If you're used to having a routine of working out in the morning and for some reason you're not doing it, shake things up a little bit. Find a time on your calendar that you will be ruthlessly protective of for when you're going to do even five minutes. Start this week, even five minutes a day of something good for your body. And when you have a habit restored, you're going to find that your rhythm and your ability to be with things that are really upsetting is going to get stronger. So that's outside of the moment. Another one outside of the moment is to spend some time thinking about yourself, your worldview, which are your societal norms, your cultural orientation, your history, including maybe I thought it's been fascinating to see Ancestry.com being promoted so strongly these last six or nine months. Yes, knowing from where we've come and what that history is puts things in context. It has this moment lighten its grip on us a little bit to remember that we've faced challenges and we've come through the other side. So reflecting on your worldview and your current mindset Is the mindset encouraging you to remember that you're capable and resourceful? Is it helping you to do a reality check? Are things as bad as you think they are? And if they are, are they in your control to do anything about? And what about your values? When's the last time you really gave some serious consideration to the values that you use to make decisions? Or are you operating out of habit and preference? When that happens and we're in fatigue and we're in the stress of things that are uncomfortable, we often will make decisions that are not values congruent. And that causes us to suffer even more. So make a little room each day, a little room, five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe before you go to bed and keep a journal, not longhand sentences. This can be a bullet journal. Keep track of the things you care about, the things you saw today that restored your faith in yourself and in the people around you. Keep track of the decisions you made. What value did they honor? Keep track of the contributions you made and the people who contributed to you. All of these things together begin to build an attitude and a muscle around gratitude and some balance to the things that are 
really difficult and challenging and painful for us right now. All right, now let's go to the moment. If you've done those first two things pretty religiously, the impact in the moment can be short-circuited because you'll recognize that that momentary situation isn't all of who those people are. Now remember that when we are angry, we're actually using that as a strategy for our fear that our own security, however we define that, is at risk. When our security is at risk, it's because something we love has been challenged. So think anger equals love. And you can remember that in your heart, then that's the place to approach that difficult conversation. The fact that you disagree, remember it means you disagree with the action, or you might disagree with the words, or you might disagree with the expression of both of those things. You're not disagreeing with the person. We often conflate one's actions as all of who a human being is. And the opportunity we have to short circuit responding out of our own disdain for what's occurring means we're dismissing the rest of that person. You want to find out who are they? What's creating the anger that they have? When we can acknowledge that that person is having a moment where they're being angry and their actions are not acceptable, and then ask them, what's really going on here? We begin to initiate relationship. So obviously you don't want to do this if you are in bodily harm. However, as you get practice with stepping in with something, I'll give you two language starters. One is, yes, I see you're really angry at this organization. Or, yes, I see that what's been said here is really hurtful. And tell me about you. How did it come to this moment? What is it you want? What would restore your sense of faith and fairness in this situation? What resource could be provided here that would have this calm the situation down so that we can think more clearly about a way forward. Our ability to step into a situation that is um, intense with anger, with a calm demeanor, and with curiosity helps another realize, ah, they see more than this moment. And assuming you've been genuine, everyone will answer the question with something. Sometimes they might say, I'm tired of talking. Okay, what are you not tired of? Because what you're doing right now is going to make this situation more difficult. How do we address what's really going on here? In other words, to continue to build and construct that relationship with that person. Now, you're going to feel uh, dismissed sometimes because there's so much hurt and anger. You're not having this conversation to come to a solution unless they're ready. It might be that the only thing you're doing in this disagreement is to acknowledge the disagreement. So here's a final tip that's really important. How will we continue this conversation? Because to remedy what you're finding so uncomfortable requires some change. And that means it's important that we find a place to talk that is without so much of this emotion. So your best thinking can be heard and someone else's best thinking can receive it and co-create something new. That might mean that we need an agreement for how to be together when we know we don't have the same worldview or mindset about this. Here's an example. We'll agree to fully hear what each other says and to play it back to ensure we've understood it fully. It will mean that our conversation might be a little slower, but we'll ensure that we have full understanding of each other before we decide that any idea is discarded or adopted. How does that sound? In other words, build the basis for the relationship and don't leave that conversation without a commitment of 
when you will get back together, and how that environment will get constructed. Hopefully you're watching this video on the other side of a disagreeable conversation or maybe getting ready to prepare. So start right away with the tips to prepare yourself before a disagreeable conversation so you have the resource and resilience inside to meet that moment in a calm, centered way. And if you're about to go enter into a disagreeable conversation or recover one, remember to set an agreement with yourself that you're here to restore a solid foundation for that relationship and together find answers.